up everyone? All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about how I used level two to predict a breakout on a stock that is currently up over 220% on the morning. In less than 30 minutes, the stock squeezed from $30 a share up to over $65 per share. And I used level two to predict that during the first pullback, it would break to the upside. We were watching it as it consolidated between its support level and resistance level, and there was something very specific that I noticed on the level two that made me really think that it was gonna break to the upside. So that's what we're gonna talk about during today's video. This is a little bit different from my typical midday market recap, and that's because, as many of you guys know, in two weeks, I'm starting over with a new small account, 500 bucks. And because I'm starting over the $500 account, I've gotta be really careful about what I'm gonna trade. And so during these next two weeks, I'm, I'm of course training to go into this new small account challenge. And so as a result, I did not end up trading the stock that we're gonna talk about today because it opened at $30 a share. It's just simply too expensive for small accounts. But what we're gonna talk about on level two can be applied to stocks of any price range and is just the latest example of a very clear indicator of support. All right, so let's get into the video. Let me break down for you what I saw that made me believe that this stock would break to the upside. All right, you guys, so this is what we're working with. KRTX, currently uh, up 255% as of right now, this moment on the day. I mean, this stock is, this is incredible. This is a huge move. It was on the top of the gap scanner this morning. If I run the gap scanner um, for 9.15 a.m., every morning when I run this scan, it shows me at 9, 10, 9, 15 a.m. which stocks are opening uh, or trading at higher prices than uh, the previous day. And so you can see this was already uh, creating this essential gap higher from the previous day. And this was all based on news, as you can see here in um, this window. So this is all the news that came out uh, overnight on the stock that was driving the price higher. Of course, I focus on trading in the first hour of the day because the first hour of the day is when uh, the market reacts to news overnight, it's when we usually get the best um, breakouts with the cleanest resolution. And we certainly got that today on KRTX. Of course, I immediately was like, well, you know, trading with a $500 account, uh, this stock is just going to be so expensive that, um, you know, at, at most I, I would be able to buy, I, I just wouldn't be able to take any share size. You know, that's the problem. Uh, with a $500 account without leverage, I'd be talking about like 10, 15, 20 shares. With leverage, maybe 100 shares, but you know, this, this just is, uh, would be a risky stock to trade. So in any case, um, for those of you trading with larger accounts, this would have been something you could have traded. And what I'm gonna show you on the level two, I've seen of stock on stocks of all price ranges. So this is really a, just a strong indicator of something that you wanna be looking for. And it occurred during this period of consolidation right through here. All right, so this is where um, we saw, or this is where I identified this pullback. So what I'm gonna do for you guys uh, is I'm gonna show you the recording here of um, this stock as I was kind of um, breaking it down and watching it. And my main issue with it sort of early on, like in this, in this area, I was thinking about trading it, you know, I was sort of interested, but I was like, man, this, this stock is so extended. And at this point right here, just from a charting perspective, what I saw as a sign of weakness was um, this candle, and let me just back this out here. So this candle right here being a red doji. All right, a red doji on high volume, that's a clear candle of indecision. And what often happens is it's a reversal indicator and then confirmation of the reversal would be the first candle to make a new low. Now, what ended up happening was the stock just kept grinding higher and higher despite this um, this clear you know potential reversal indicator. So I was like, all right, well, now I'm a little bit confused because the stock is not really respecting um, the, the technical analysis. And that was actually one of the first indicators that something um, a little bit different was gonna happen with the stock. When a stock from a technical perspective is looking weak, like, has a, a red doji with high day volume, but surges up anyways, what that indicates to me is that there are people that are buying this stock that are not using traditional technical analysis used by day traders. Now, some stocks on a regular day are, are primarily being traded by day traders, whereas others are being purchased by long-term investors who 
uh, truly believe in the news catalyst that's been released and the potential of the company and are taking a long-term position. When you have that, you have people that are buying that aren't looking at charts necessarily, that are buying because they simply want to get in the stock and sometimes with very large orders, which will kind of throw off the technical analysis because they'll just all of a sudden send a buy order at what technically we would consider as day traders to be a random spot. And so that's where we sort of get thrown off when you have uh, long-term investors or hedge funds or whatever it is uh, investing in some of these companies. And you're going to see that a lot more uh, in the higher price range, but you do see it on some of the lower price stocks as well. So during this period of time right now, this is the level two here. So we've got the bid on the left. We've got the ask on the on the right. So the buyers on the left, the sellers on the right. Stock's currently up 156%. We're on uh, what is a little bit of a one minute pullback right here on the one minute chart. So I'm gonna jump forward. Um, I've glanced at a couple other charts. And, uh, and initially I was kind of watching this first candle on the one minute to make a new high. So first one minute candle to make a new high is, is typically something we would look at. Now, what I want you to recognize here, this candle just closed at 9.43, exactly, that's when the, the one minute candle closes. And it has a high of, it looks like about 44, oh no, maybe that's 45.50, I'm not, my mouse isn't over the, the candle at the time. But what we would be looking for is the first one minute candle to make a new high, that's a technical setup. And so when I know the technical setup, what I generally will do is I'll say, okay, if the price is, uh, and let me just go on the chart, I'll just pull up the actual chart and, and tell you what the price was. Um, so the price of that candle at that time was, let's see, it was, um, it was, the high was 45. So the challenge there, of course, is that this is 75 cents spread. And so it's actually above 45 on the ask. All right, so let's just back this up for one second. So we'll go just back to here. All right, so we're looking for the first candle to make a new high, which is gonna be a break of 45. So there's 45 on the ask. No prints have actually gone through above 45. And so as a result, the candle closes. There it closes, and now this candle is almost gapping slightly higher and surging up. So generally on the level two, I, I would have been saying, okay, I'm. I'm long biased above uh, $45. That's the spot that I'd be watching. Uh, and I'll just put this up because I will use the volume on this in, in a second. Um, all right, so let's see. So we'll keep going here. And basically you see the stock squeeze back up. We get a double top. We know high a day is always uh, a spot that has a risk of double topping. So we get a little bit of a double top, a little bit of a fade. All right, so this is the whole area where it's just basically grinding higher. I'm interested, um, but I don't feel like there's a low risk opportunity to take a trade on it. Through this area, it's sort of chasing the circuit breaker halt. So this is the halt level, L-U-L-D. Those of you guys who are interested in learning how to set this up on uh, your charts is something that we cover in the classes. And, and really this video is kind of like a little tidbit of the type of stuff that I go over in our classes. So 54.57 is a circuit breaker halt level. That means the stock is squeezed up more than 10% in the last five minutes and is about to get halted. But the bid price, 54.57, has to stay above that 54.57 mark for a minimum of 15 seconds. And so there it dips down below. And look at that drop. I mean, that just dropped $1.70 per share or $1.50 per share. And that's why, of course, the risk of this type of stock is, um, of trading it is on uh, certainly on the higher side. All right, so it ends up continuing higher, keeps chasing these sort of circuit breakers, moving up to the circuit breaker level, pulling back, moving up to the circuit breaker level, pulling, that, and then this time it gets halted. It ends up resuming a little bit lower. And here I said, okay, guys, this is something very interesting highest second highest candle of the day is on red volume okay so this is technical this is a technical characteristic of the chart second highest day is on red second highest candle of the day is on red volume we're getting a little bit of a pullback here so my question is is this going to be a pullback where the first one minute candle to make a new high is going to give us resolution and to move back up towards 60. and so i'm watching the level two and i notice that the spread continues to be as you can see quite large 
This, again, is uh, a characteristic of higher price stocks. So the first candle to make a new high is currently over $56. All right, so 56 is our uh, kind of line in the sand here. And there it breaks 56, rips up to 57.98, but we continue to have now an even larger spread of $1.90 per share. So not able to take a trade on it, just kind of watching um, from the sidelines. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna end up forming, uh, it's gonna reject this level up here and end up forming uh, what's called a, a gravestone doji, which is a technical um, uh, candle formation that's gonna occur right here. And so it's gonna occur because the stock squeezes up to this level, is unable to really break it in a, in a strong way, and then when the candle closes, remember that candles close every five minutes. So at the end of this five minute period, which will be 10.05, this is gonna close back down towards the low so here we've got 10.04 and 35 seconds. This is a red candle with a bottom and this little top, and that's called a gravestone doji. It maybe somewhat looks like a gravestone to some people. I don't know. But in any case, what we have here is high red volume and pullback. So during this area, I'm thinking, okay, just now double bottomed at 53. I was actually watching it for a short below 53 because I'm thinking that this is a gravestone doji. This is a, a technical indicator of reversal. We've got high red volume here. So I'm looking at it short below 53 and my stop is gonna be 55. So now through this area is where it kind of starts to get interesting. And this is where I'm gonna uh, play some of the audio of what I was talking about during, um, uh, during this period of consolidation. So let me just jump a little bit further forward. So that's where I'm analyzing the gravestone doji. I'm talking about that candle. I'm just going to move a little bit further forward here. I'm just going to see because it, it kind of consolidates in this range for a little period of time. Okay, so let's see. Let me turn on my audio and hear what I'm saying. It looks like there's a hidden buyer. So, I mean, there may be someone buying this off support despite that. All right, so let me just back this up for you real quick. Side, if it breaks 50. So uh, notice selling there at 54 and it's looks like there's a hidden buyer a hidden so buyer there may be someone buying this off support despite that now let's look at that again realistically so i'd be waiting for anything else to hit the high day momo scanner you know, so the selling there momentum. at 54 selling at 53 50. So of course, I'm watching the level two and I'm thinking below 53 is a short. So let me just zoom forward here. So this is I, where- you know, I don't like to short. See all, so that right there, that burst of selling at 54, this is only displaying 500 shares available to buy. And all of that selling, what that tells me is that there's a hidden, a hidden buyer accumulating shares at $54 per share. The stock currently right now, just for reference, is at uh, a gain of 270% on the day and is at 64.70 by 65.23. All right, so this stock is continuing to surge up. So what, what I saw here was this hidden buyer. So let me play what I was analyzing. We're sort of near these support levels, just the risk there is on the higher side, but Realistically, it, it looks more trustworthy to the short side. If it breaks 53. If it breaks 53, it's a short. But watch again this continued support around 54. So there again, all of that selling at 54, only showing 400 shares. There's a hidden buyer. Someone is accumulating. A lot of selling there at 54. Position. And it's looks like there's a hidden buyer. So, I mean, there may be someone buying this off support despite that five minute uh, gravestone doji. Candle. So why would someone be buying this off of support here despite a gravestone doji? You can clearly tell that there's a hidden buyer here at 54. Clearly, all of this selling is going through and the price is not breaking. 
right? So let's keep watching this. More selling, that's a ton of selling. You've got 33,000 shares of selling that just went through there. So think about the position size someone might be accumulating. So I'm really thinking, I look at this and I think, okay, if it breaks below 53, it's gonna crack, it's gonna break hard. And, and we see this in the same way um, when there's a lot of accumulation underneath the level that's moving to the upside. And when it finally breaks, it's like a, a snap. It just rips really quickly. And I still look at this at this moment and I'm thinking that it's got a double bottom here at 53. If it breaks 53, we've got a potential move back down towards the VWAP of 44. And I felt the risk was much lower to the short side than to the long side, given the fact that we had high a day volume here on a red candle, or second highest volume candle was red. We have two red candles in a row, and the second one's a gravestone doji. From a technical perspective, everything is saying this stock is not trustworthy. But on the level two, we have this hidden buyer. So let's keep watching this. Let me fast forward a little bit. 405 by 5450. Short would be in the past. You know, it's been a, um, a you're not going to have someone. I don't think you're going to have someone covering a short position right here. Why, why would you? Look at right? all that. There's a hidden buyer at 54. Look at all that accumulation. What it is. So someone's buying this stock at 54. If you're short and you're covering here, you either are way underwater, in which case, why cover here when it's finally looking weak? Or you short it up here at 58, but you're only up $4 a share and it's looking really weak. So that tells me that someone is buying this stock. That's how I interpret it. And my interpretation could be wrong, but You know, that makes me wonder if we are going to see this um, make a move higher. All right. So I don't really feel comfortable shorting it. So now I'm thinking it's not safe it to is. short. All right. It's not safe to short because there's clearly a hidden buyer. And so let me but articulate again relatively why I thought that. So if someone had shorted this stock up here at 57 or 58, let's just say, let's say someone took a huge short and we've seen already over 100,000 shares go through. So let's just say someone took a 100,000 share short position, which is, I mean, it doesn't even make sense, but it's like a $5 million short position. All right, so they took a, a massive short position up here at 57 and they're covering down here at 54 for only $3 a share. So, okay, that's a $300,000 gain, but it's finally looking weak. It looks like, and remember as a short, as a, when you're short, you cover by buying your shares. So that would, you could be a hidden buyer buying to cover. But why would you cover right here when it is finally looking like with a gravestone doji that's gonna fall over? So if you were a day trader and you were actually short this thing up at 57, you would be holding for a move back down towards 44, back down towards the VWAP, absolutely. So that made me think that this is not a short sell seller covering a position. Now, of course, if a short seller was underwater from way down here, they could cover right here, but why would you cover here, again, when it's finally starting to look weak? What you're doing with, with that hidden order Making is you're creating up pretty darn well. support. So why would you wanna create that level of support? And so now watch this. Now, all of a sudden, it's gonna rip. And now we're off to the races, all right? So I was able to predict that this would happen over $55 a share because of that hidden buyer that was at 54. And so the reason I chose, or the reason I said 55 is because this consolidation here was right between, uh, for the most part, it was right between $55 and 53. So I said below 53 is a short, above 55 is a hard stop, or a long. And once we saw that hidden buyer become more and more kind of, um, you know, very clear, I started feeling stronger that this was, that there's someone here that was buying this up. And so um, Goldman Sachs put out a buy or put out a price target rating on this of over $100 a share. 
All right. So, you know, now I'm thinking, is there a hedge fund? Is there a big investor that's coming in here and it's just buying the stock up? Because this can't be a day trader. <laughs> You're talking about millions of dollars in, in terms of a long position. That's what it looks like to me. That's not a day trader. That's someone that is accumulating a massive position, 100,000 shares, 200,000 shares, maybe more. And let's think about how much that person is up right now. They accumulated a lot of that position. It looks like around 53. Well, if they took 300,000 shares, <laughs> they're up 3 million bucks. All right. $10 a share, just about. So this, you know, for, for big money traders could have been a huge home run. Of course, for a small account trader uh, like me and like many of you guys, this would be one that would be more difficult uh, to take a large position on. And, and no doubt a move from 55 up to 59 was a, is a, a really solid breakout and a nice move, but it's just not something that I would trust. Uh, the risk there is just for me too high. So, you know, of course, uh, leave that alone. And then we get this breakout here, big spreads. And this is one of those days where I said, you know what, I would feel better at the end of the day knowing that I maintain the discipline to not jump into a $55 stock since my wheelhouse is between three and, and, and $10, three and $8 for a small account, that I would be much better off if I focus on um, staying within my, my wheelhouse. So staying within the wheelhouse, stay focused, trade the best, leave the rest, even though this would be great for a large account, for most of my students with a small account, this, this one doesn't happen to be one that would be easy to trade. And so what we end up getting here is this squeeze and this move, as you can see, it just continues higher and higher. So an awesome opportunity and even right there, um, you know, a big move. And, and so it wouldn't surprise me if this stock does continue higher today, because I, I really don't know that there's someone out there that is day trading, you know, a five, $10 million position. This seems more like something that someone is, uh, has just accumulated uh, along this move and certainly uh, in this area here, 53 to 54. And that makes me wonder if we are going to see this squeeze up towards 75, 80 or even $100 over the next few days. I, you know, we'll, we'll be very interested to see what happens uh, because this could be a position that someone with, you know, 500,000 shares you know, every every dollar a share is five hundred thousand bucks. So ten dollars a share is five million. Thirty dollars a share is fifteen million. You know, I mean, you're talking about some some big money potentially being made by uh, whoever is has accumulated that position. Um, so you know, in any case, we've seen this exact same pattern on lower price stocks. Um, I'm trying to remember the the one that we saw most recently. Um, I'm blanking on the symbol, but in any case, uh, it was a stock that squeezed up from about $18 to $50, $60 a share, a similarly really impressive move. And one of the first things that I noticed about it was that guys, there's a lot of selling, but someone is buying up shares. And so when you've got like basically a big whale buying up shares, that's when you just kind of want to see what's happening in the market and you don't want to get in that person's way. You don't want to be shorting into that. You want to just be riding that momentum that that person effectively is creating or that firm or that fund or whatever it happens to be. So great opportunities here. Um, and those of you guys who have gotten really good at reading level two, you were seeing the same thing that I saw, that hidden buyer right back down there at 53.54. So let's look at that uh, again, just for uh, a quick refresher. So it was sort of right through, where was this? Um, looking for, um, I've lost my place. So it was right through this area here. We got a little pullback, dip down, bounce off 40, 53. And then right in here is where we started seeing that hidden buyer in the 54. And what's interesting is that even when it finally broke 54, because it, it did end up finally breaking $54, right? It broke 54 and dropped down to like 53.80, but it didn't go lower than that. So, you know, again, it's just showing you that someone here was buying up a huge position. And I, I can only speculate how many shares they bought and how long they're going to hold it. But 
I can't imagine that that wasn't an awesome win. And, you know, again, it could it have been someone who has been short this stock for the last six months and, you know, was just covering a huge loss on the short side? It certainly could have been. Uh, there's a story about a trader who lost, um, I believe it was like $13 million or $15 million on RKDA during this spike right here. And um, the clearing firm, I think it was the clearing firm, was basically marketing him out of the trade. And that's as you look at the chart is it was just like spiking up. It was as the firm was closing his, I think it was like an, I don't know, 700,000, 800,000 share position, <laughs> like a massive position. And you know what happens when you do like a market order on 50,000 share blocks or 100,000 share blocks on a low float stock? They rip up. So you'll see that type of stuff on level two. And RKDA is one that we did really well on. But um, KRTX, very interesting patterns here. And I'm going to be uh, really interested to see what it does over the next couple of days. Unfortunately, again, being in a small account, sometimes these ones, you just end up not being able to trade. And even though I, of course, you know, could open up my account and use my buying power, I'm really trying to trade the exact same way that many of you guys are trading. That's why I'm doing the small account challenge. So those of you guys who are feeling a little bit of FOMO today, who are like, man, you know, the stock squeezed up 270% and I wasn't able to trade it because I couldn't afford it. That's something that you'll simply have to deal with in the market. And um, you need to have a level of acceptance around it that sometimes you're gonna miss opportunities for one reason or another. And that's okay. Because the good news is there will always be another stock around the corner. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. I will come back through and answer them uh, later today and uh, in, the, in the future as you guys continue to watch this video. And uh, when we have another good example of something like this, I will be recording it and uh, I will make another video on it. All right, so that's it for me. Again, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys for the next video. Hey, did you know every morning I go live to stream my pre-market watch list? Subscribe to the channel, press the alert button, and you'll get the notifications. And if you want to learn more about trading, check out the links in the description. And if you have questions, post them in the comments because I personally respond to every comment posted on my channel.